In this video, I'm going to show you how I improve my NMAT score from being in the 95th percentile to achieving a 99th percentile score and give you some tips on how you can improve your scores as well. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. And when I was initially studying for the NMAT, the review center I attended gave me a diagnostic test at the start of the review. When I got my score back, it showed that I achieved a 95th percentile on the exam which was a good score but by no means the score that I wanted to achieve in order to have a very competitive application to the medical schools I wanted to apply to. And when you're applying to medical school, you want to give yourself the best chances of getting into medical school, so I wanted to make sure I would get a very high score in the NMAT. And hopefully, the tips in this video will help you do so in your own preparations. My very first tip for you guys is to take a mock exam even before you start your review. A mock exam is basically a simulated exam that contains the same number of questions and the same time limit as the actual exam. What this does is that it gives you an idea of what your foundation is so that you know what to build upon during your review. As I mentioned in the intro to this video, the mock exam that I took served as a springboard for my review because it showed me which areas of the exam I was weak at. And as a result, I made a conscious effort to work extra hard in these areas so I can improve my score as much as possible. For you, taking a mock exam can serve as a guide in helping you construct your study plan for your actual revision. Whether your NMAT review timeline is 3 months before the exam or even a week before the actual NMAT, taking a diagnostic exam is an important step to know your weaknesses so that you're not wasting your time reviewing the material you're already strong at and focusing your energy more on areas that you're not particularly good at. Whether you decided to go to a review center or take the self-study route, having a study plan is important because that way, you're studying and staying focused when you should, thus you're wasting less time, and you take breaks at appropriate times, which in the long run will prevent you from burning out during this period. I say you ideally need around 2-3 to three months to properly review for this exam, especially if you have to balance it with schoolwork, but if you can dedicate almost all your time to just reviewing for this exam, it's feasible within one month. For me, the schedule I set for myself was rather simple since I attended the review center. All I did was make sure that on those days that I attended the review center, I would only do NMAT work and not bother thinking about any schoolwork or exams that I would have the following week. For those of you planning to do the self-study route, one study plan that you can follow is a 6-day plan per week where you study from Monday to Saturday with Sunday as your rest day. Each study block would be composed of 50 minutes of dedicated study followed by 10 minutes of rest. And you'd repeat that for 4 blocks in the morning, followed by a 1 hour lunch break, and repeat the cycle again 4 more times in the afternoon. This would leave you the rest of the day to relax and to take your mind off things. My recommendation is that you alternate study blocks of one study block used for reviewing the material and another study block doing practice questions. That way, you don't get bored throughout the 4 hour session. If there's any tip in this video that will for sure improve your NMAT scores, that will be doing as many practice questions as possible. When I was studying for the NMAT, by the time I took the actual exam, I would already taken around a thousand practice questions and I think this is a big contributor to how I managed to achieve a 99th percentile ranking. As I've said in my active recall video, testing yourself the single most effective way to make sure you retain information. As the scientific evidence shows us, testing yourself once is significantly more useful than rereading the review material over and over again. So if I had to make a decision between taking one mock exam and rereading my notes three times, I will take the mock exam every single time. For those of you who want some practice mock exams, I'll link some down in the description and in the pinned comment down below, so make sure to check those out. The other benefit of practice exams is that you get to learn from your mistakes. In learning, Knowing why you're wrong is just as important as knowing what the correct answer is. This is because you can correct the misinformation in your head so that you don't commit the same mistake again in the actual exam. This principle not only applies to the items you got wrong but also the items that you felt iffy about. Because if you're unsure about your answer for a certain item, that means you haven't completely mastered the topic yet and you should probably review it. So after answering a set of practice questions, take the time to read the explanations in the answer key and if that's not available, Take the time to google the answers or to read your notes so that you understand the concept further. And just to reinforce these concepts further, take note of them by writing them down in a notebook or on flashcards and review them regularly such as before bed so that you interrupt the forgetting curve and you remember it for longer. Trust me, it'll make a world of difference in your scores later on. 
So as you take practice test after practice test, note down your scores on a notebook or on a piece of paper so that you know where you're progressing. If you see that you're meeting your goals, that means you're on the right track. But if you see your scores are not trending in the right direction, that might indicate that you're not doing something right. It could be as simple as you're making errors in questions involving patterns of shapes in the inductive reasoning subsection, or you could be making mistakes in stoichiometry in the chemistry subsection. By having this information available to you, you know what specific areas in each subject you're weak at so that you can act on it. This is important because with only a limited amount of time to study for the NMAT, you want to make sure you're making the most out of it. It may make you feel uncomfortable at first because you'll end up getting a lot of mistakes on the practice test, but in the long run, it'll benefit you more because it's much harder to pull up a high score to an even higher score than it is to pull up a low score to a high score. For example, if you're already scoring 700 on the social sciences portion of the exam, it'll take a lot of effort to pull your grade up to a 750. On the other hand, if you're scoring 350-400 on the visual acuity test, it'll take much less effort to improve your score greatly from that low score of 350 to 400 to a score of 600, which is what I experienced when I took the NMAT. And in my opinion, performing well on several subtests is way more important than doing great on certain subtests and doing poorly on others. So I hope you found these tips helpful for your NMAT revision. If you want to learn more on how you can perform well in this exam, check out how I studied for the exam here, and check out the test taking strategies that I used during the NMAT. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.